Hey, welcome to another episode of West Coast Supercars and Classics. I'm Mark. Now that we've had our Porsche Taycan for about a month, I thought it would be a really good idea to go over the uh, few things that you might be curious about with owning a high performance EV, such as range, uh, power consumption, recharging, and that kind of stuff, the sort of day-to-day -day, uh, EV ownership issues. I'll start by talking about the Porsche Connect app, which is something I hadn't talked about in uh, previous episodes. The Connect app allows you to look at and program some things about the car from wherever you are on the internet. Now with the Taycan, like the uh, Tesla models as well, it's continuously online. It connects to a cellular network, so obviously when you're driving around, uh, you can stay connected to whatever uh, servers and so on that Porsche has. So there's emergency services and stuff like that. For example, if you get in a collision, the car will notify the server and so on. So that's an interesting thing. But nevertheless, uh, the main thing about this app is that you can take a look at the state of charge of the car when it's on your tether and you can change the amount of charge that you want, the time of day that you want it to charge. They recommend 85% charge on the battery. So in normal use, I have been using this car from 85 down to maybe 60 or 50% uh, battery capacity. And the reason for that is to preserve the life of the battery. If you charge to full capacity a lot, it does apparently eventually uh, degrade the life of the battery. Same with discharging it uh, kind of fully, which you would never do, just like running your gas tank empty. So here we are today. When you look at the main screen, as you can see, you have your car here. It's the correct color for now. Uh, we are getting a color change wrap very shortly. I'll tell you about that a little bit more. Also, uh, this is gonna be on the dyno pretty soon over at Paradigm Auto in Victoria. So uh, stay tuned for that. That's gonna be a really interesting episode. Anyway, so yeah, you have uh, some choices here. You can see my battery's at 72%, 271 kilometers range left. There's a little information thing here. You can increase your target, target charge. I usually get this thing to prepare the car for me at 6.50 in the morning, 6.50 a.m. And that preheats the batteries and gets the car up to 21 degrees. Uh, while it's on the tether so you're using shore power for that instead of battery power and that's just because you're gonna drive it away so you might as well have it ready for you that's very handy and then you can have a look at your stats from your last trip and you can look through all of your trips as well so you first go into um, the start time here you can see 36 minutes 17 kilometers average speed 28 consumption was uh, 34.6 kilowatt hours. Well, I went for a little bit of a hoon actually. Um, what I want to do is I want to show you since charging. There we go. That's a better stat for January 21st today because I charged it up this morning and then I took it out and ran it all day long. So you can see what I did. I did an hour and 33 of driving, 59 kilometers, average speed was 37 kilometers, and the average consumption was 27.6 kilowatts kilowatt hours pardon me per hundred kilometers that sounds a little complicated um, it's you know somewhere like uh, it's probably in the 80s 80 miles per gallon equivalent something like that total mileage on the car is now 2200 kilometers it's got your tire pressures for you and stuff like that so yeah all right now this car knows where you are when you have your key with you so if you haven't seen the Porsche keys I put it over here they look like a little <laughs> a little sort of car I don't know if they look like your car or not not really so obviously you have to have your key with you to operate the car the but um, if you want to take the charger cable out for example you have to have it with you otherwise it won't allow you to release it now when you have your key with you the car will know when you get close to it and it will automatically unlock and get ready for you. Like so. You notice the mirrors came out. 
I just moved the camera a little bit so you can see this. Also, your door handles pop out for you, right? Because they're usually flush, they pop out. Now, if you want to lock the car at this point, you just press there, they retract, this goes back, okay? Same thing happens in reverse. We're not, we don't need to actually get in the car right now. What I want to do is just charge it up. Now, you see, I can't charge it because it has now locked itself. So you can't access these ports until you unlock the car. So here we go. Now that'll unlock. Notice I don't have the fancy, you know, move your hand by it and it opens up because I thought that was kind of stupid, personally. I don't need something like that. All right, I'll get my charger. And we plug it in. There we go. Now this is going to charge up for whatever amount of time it is. And what I want to see is we're, uh, we're going to go back to 85%. So what I want to know is when I was out today for the day using the car, how many kilowatt hours that were consumed during that time, we can figure that all out. Just locked itself again. We want to know how many kilowatt hours we used of power. And also, let's keep track of how long it takes to actually charge the car. Because I think you'd like to know sort of what to expect with your recharging. Generally speaking, if you're out and about shopping and doing stuff like that, your normal everyday use of the car, doesn't take very long to charge it back up. So you drive in, just plug it in when you get home, no big deal. And then it gives you a little sign at some point that it's finished charging. Another interesting thing is we've put a couple thousand kilometers on this car and I have not been to a gas station since we bought this car because I haven't been running the old Studebaker here. Um, got the RX-8 under a cover. It's going to come out of uh, hibernation for about a week or so because we're going to get this to M2 graphics in a few days to put this uh, color change wrap on it. And I need to talk to you more about that, tell you what's coming up. I don't want to give it all away, but... Um, in any case, I haven't been to a gas station because I haven't needed any gas. And you know what? I don't miss it. I don't miss it. Like I said, we all have our little gadgets and devices. We've got our computers, we've got whatever else, appliances and stuff. You plug them in, you charge up your stuff, and then uh, you take it with you when you go. Or you take your laptop, whatever, put it in your briefcase, and off you go to your meetings or whatever it is. And really, it's the same thing with your electric car. The weird thing is, is that, you know, you're able to actually drive a real, like, serious high-performance car, and you're just charging it up at home. Um, that's pretty interesting. That's a, that's a really cool experience. So this is plugged in, and we're going to come back when it's finished, and I'll have a look at the stats and see what it has to say about how long it took to charge and how many kilowatt hours we used, and then we'll do a little summary of it. All right, bit of movie magic and we'll be back like in two seconds. Ta-da! Well, due to the magic of editing, it is now the next day. Um, the car charged overnight and I've actually already taken it out for a little uh, trip to drop off my daughter for her bus in the morning. And, uh, but I did save all the information regarding the stats. So I wanted to, I took some notes and I want to go over that. So according to my Flow app, which is the uh, brand of the level two charger that we've got here, FLO is the product. Uh, the Flow actually has an app that goes on my iPhone. Also, it sends you notifications via email. So you will tell you if your car is charged up tell you when the session ended, all that kind of stuff. So it's kind of handy just to kind of keep track of things. So you recall, we just plugged it in. That was at uh, 9.47 PM and it was plugged in all night. So the total session time was eight hours and 47 minutes. That's actually the time that the thing was tethered to the charger. It doesn't actually tell you how many hours it was it was actually feeding the car with power but I can find that out um, through looking at another uh, notification that it gave me so it gives me a couple of notifications on the Porsche Connect app uh, it just tells you that you're up to 87 percent and you know you've got X amount of kilometers that you can do the flow app said that it gave us 17 kilowatt hours of power 
So you recall that was from the whole day of driving around, right? The actual time it took to charge the car up was two hours and nine minutes. So yeah, it was tethered overnight. It charged for two hours, nine minutes. So the session actually finished, the charging session finished at 11.56 p.m. Started at 9.47, ended at 11.56 p.m., just a little over two hours. Porsche Connect says that it used, you recall, 27.6 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. This is all our Canadian system here. Um, if you translate that into kind of equivalent miles per gallon, that translates into about 76 miles per gallon. Considering the car's weight, you know, whatever it is, 4,500 pounds, uh, and it's... Peak horsepower is what, 560, I think, in uh, launch mode. Although you don't get that when you're just driving around. It's more like 490. Now, I wanna try to put this in perspective. For, for those of you who like you know, fast, powerful cars, like all of you, right? Um, I wanna put it in perspective in terms of how the EV translates to the gas engine car of a similar kind of power and configuration. So I took just out of curiosity, I, I thought maybe the BMW 8 series, right? So I looked up the stats on the um, BMW 8, uh, M850i, excuse me. Actually, before I get into the cost of that and the consumption, I forgot to mention what it cost to run the car. Yes, that's very important for you guys who uh, drive cars that require premium fuel um, and to preface once again the costs I always was running my high output engines on premium usually uh, Chevron 94 um, so we'll get into that in a moment so the Porsche Connect says 27.6 uh, kilowatt hours per hundred kilometers we put 17 kilowatt hours of power into this baby based on the higher of the two rates from BC Hydro um, I'm using the higher rate because usually we're on the higher rate here uh, from BC Hydro. So that rate is 14 cents per kilowatt hour. So since we used 17 kilowatt hours yesterday, that works out to $2.38. That's Canadian dollars. So you'd have to translate that into, into American. And I don't know what your power rates are. You know, I mean, it varies depending on your utility, right? So. I'm just giving you an example, 14 cents per kilowatt hour, works out to $2.38. All right, and that's a car that has peak horsepower of 560. So, you know, that's pretty economical. So let's look at the BMW M850i as an example, because it's got 530 horsepower, it's twin turbo, whatever it is, it's a four, is it a four liter? Eight? I can't remember what the size of the motor is anyway. You can let me know if you look it up. Um, acceleration is probably pretty similar on the, on the uh, M850i to this Taycan 4S because this is not the turbo model. Now the 850i uh, gets about 18 miles per gallon in the city. And yesterday I was, I was going through town, you know, stop and go traffic. I did a little bit of freeway driving just on the on the jaunt um, coming off Mackenzie, getting back to Millstream. So for the BMW, let's just assume, say 20 miles per gallon, let's give it just an average. And that works out to 11.7 liters per 100 kilometers in the Canadian or Euro spec. And uh, 15, 59 kilometers, which I did yesterday, that works out to 11.7 liters times 0.59, right? That's 6.9 liters equivalent. That's what the BMW would have used, 6.9 liters of fuel. And if I looked up this morning, uh, Chevron 94 premium uh, is now 151.9, according to Gas Buddy. And that would have cost about 10 bucks, 10.50, okay? $10.50. So that's, close to five times the cost of what the energy cost me yesterday to run the car. And that's in BC and it's powered by hydroelectric power, as I mentioned. So this is, you know, you're damned if you do, damned if you don't, ha ha, um, with electric power, right? Some people don't want us to build any dams. 
I'm not going to get into that debate right now. But the point is, um, in terms of actual real carbon output from yesterday's driving, it was virtually nil because the dam isn't really using any carbon right now, I guess for maintenance or whatever. And I'm not speaking to the embedded carbon that's in every manufactured object. It's in your cell phones. It's actually in your use of the internet. You're using carbon every time you do a search using Google or you're on YouTube, like with this channel. Everything is, is going to have a carbon footprint of some kind. Um, so we're not talking about the embedded carbon that every car has to be manufactured and that kind of stuff. I'm not making any arguments about that. I'm just talking about the real world, day-to-day -day energy use of the car, what it costs. So about 238 for driving this car around all day yesterday, 59 kilometers of driving. It wasn't a huge amount of driving. Uh, but for sure, if you're driving a, a car, and you know that BMW is an equivalent price to this. I think the coupe well specced out is a similar price to this thing. So, you know, your day-to-day -day running costs are going to be a lot lower with this car. Not to mention also that the service interval on this car is pretty hilarious. The first service on the Taycan, and it's free service by the way, the first service is after two years and then the next service is two years after that. So I'm thinking, I don't know, I've never had a full electric car before, but since 90% or so of the braking under normal driving conditions is done just by regeneration, you're not going to get a lot of wear on your front uh, brake pads or rotors, hopefully. I think that just about covers the sort of energy use and the, the Connect app, the Porsche Connect app. So I think I'm going to just leave it at that for today. Uh, once again, thank you very much for watching. As always, I invite you to subscribe to the channel because I'd love to build up a little bit more and uh, make more videos in the future. Stay tuned for a new video on the dyno test of this car, which is going to happen at Paradigm Auto in Victoria. Thanks, guys, at Paradigm. Looking forward to that. And also some driving videos, too, when we get a chance. I'm going to do that really soon. Okay, take care, everybody. Thanks.